Electric vehicles are here to stay, and they are getting more and more popular every day. Tesla continues to sell out of their vehicles, even though their cheapest one starts at $40,000. Now, Tesla's growing demand is great, but there is still a significant part of the market that has not been addressed, since $40,000 prices out a lot of people from even considering an electric vehicle. Tesla has plans for an all-electric $25,000 vehicle by 2023, and today we're going to look at all of the competition that is already here or coming their way in that price range, so let's get into it. At Tesla's battery day about a year ago now, Tesla detailed their plans to make their own 4680 battery cells. These cells bring all sorts of advantages that will bring the cost of battery cells down in future cars, which right now is the most expensive part about them. In order to have a battery powered car with a range good enough to truly rival a gas vehicle, battery packs need to be large and end up expensive. Every company is approaching this issue differently, and Tesla seems to be the one most focused on the core fundamentals of battery production from what we can tell. The details of their 25 thousand dollar car are slim, but people are very excited for it since Tesla makes great cars. The Model 3 had troubles and still doesn't quite start as low as the original announced price, but it has delivered in a huge way, allowing tons more people to switch to electric cars. So at Tesla's battery day, they talked about the nitty gritty of mining, manufacturing, the chemistry of their battery cells, and how those cells will be built into structural battery packs in future cars for better cost savings and integration. The last two things they announced were the Plaid Model S, which is now out, along with their compelling $25,000 car, which they plan to manufacture in the next few years. The most recent updates on that car were that they plan to make it in 2023, and they want it to be fully autonomous without a steering wheel. We're not so sure about that second part, but 2023 seems like a possible timeline, since this car will be possible once Tesla has more factories up and operational, and has their 4680 cells producing at scale to make this car a reality. Both of those things seem possible for 2023, even if it ends up being towards the end of the year, and this car would likely deliver a range in the 200s or 250s if possible. Previously, Elon Musk has called a range under 250 miles EPA unacceptably low, so that might be the floor that Tesla aims for on this $25,000 car, but we might see them go below that in the interest of cost. If this car has to have a 200 mile range to come in at that cost, they might do it, but the goal here is that the 4680 cells will allow their entire lineup to get better range for cheaper, meaning that this $25,000 car could have similar range options to that of the current Model 3. There have been a lot of concepts of what this car will look like, stemming from a render that Tesla themselves posted in China as part of recruiting for this project. Likely it will be a small hatchback, and I like to refer to it as a Model Y Mini, since I think the shape will be pretty similar all around, but smaller. In any case, there are a number of $25,000 EVs coming to market, or already here that will be competing with this car, so let's get into it. First is a vehicle that just launched in China and looks to be one of the best cars in this price range, the Xpeng P5. Xpeng is known to take a lot of inspiration from Tesla, even to the point of stealing when it comes to their autopilot system and Tesla employee recruitment. The new details for the P5 just released and include official pricing, range, and include LiDAR systems for driver assistance. Quote, with the P5, we have delivered a new level in sophistication and technological advancement for smart EVs in China at a competitive price point. We believe that this is an age of intelligence and that intelligence will redefine mobility as a whole. Now we have made the best in class smart family sedan available at the RMB 200,000 price range, bringing some of the most advanced driver assistance functionality to China's vast and fast growing middle class consumer base. There are six configurations for the P5 ranging from about $25,549 to $34,811 converted. With all of these variants, Xpeng plans to debut their Xpilot 3 3.5 as an option, which is their strongest driver assistance hardware system to date with 32 perception sensors and more like automotive grade LiDAR, 12 ultrasonic sensors, and 13 HD cameras. As you can see, there's a lot of inspiration taken from Tesla with its clean interior, and it looks to be a really great functional car for the price. The cheapest model of the P5 will get 460 kilometers or 285 miles of range on the NEDC standard, which will translate to something like 321 kilometers or 200 miles of an EPA range. Right there, this is a very functional, usable vehicle that comes in right around $25,000. Then the $35,000 model, still coming in less than a Model 3, will get 600 kilometers or 373 miles of range on NEDC, roughly translated to about 418 kilometers or 260 miles of an EPA estimated range. One especially cool feature of this car is how the front seats are able to fully recline, turning the vehicle into a great relaxing spot for watching movies, sleeping, 
shooting or anything else. It even has the option for the cabin to include a movie projector screen or sleeping compartment specifically with options for a built-in fridge or fragrance control. These are definitely some luxury type features coming to a very functional, affordable electric car. Now, unfortunately for the time being, the P5 is only available in China. And most articles say something along the lines of, quote, while we're unlikely to see Xpeng enter the US market anytime soon, the automaker has already started exports of its P7 sedan and G3 crossover to Norway and plans to enter more European markets in the near future. So if this car succeeds and they are able to keep producing it at its low cost, it could make its way to Europe and eventually the United States, maybe by the time Tesla is ramping up their $25,000 competitor here. In any case, in a recent interview with Elon Musk, he said, quote, I have a great deal of respect for the many Chinese automakers for driving these technologies. My frank observation is that Chinese automobile companies are the most competitive in the world, especially because some are very good at software. We'll see how long it takes for these competitors to enter the US market, but Elon Musk seems to see a lot of real competition coming from there, and the P5 is definitely part of that competition. Next up is a car that is available today, the Mini Cooper SE. The Mini Cooper SE starts at $29,900, but can come down significantly and under $25,000 with EV tax credits available for that car. This car is definitely designed as a city driver and not a commuter with a range of 114 miles on a charge. You can fill up to 80% in around 36 minutes, and it has a zero to 60 in 6.9 seconds. Now, none of those specs are particularly impressive when stacked up against most popular EVs today, but it will definitely get the job done for a cheap, functional electric vehicle. This will surely be a competitor to Tesla's $25,000 vehicle, but by the time it comes, it might not stand a chance due to its incredibly low range. In the real world, you're probably looking closer to 100 miles or less on a charge, so it can't do much easily beyond normal daily driving, meaning it often can't be people's only vehicle. The exciting part of this car is that it exists and it's available as a cheap electric option, and another car similar to that is the Fiat 500e, or maybe I should say was. The Fiat 500e was a tiny two-door vehicle that was designed from the ground up to be an EV. The interior was fairly simple with a horizontal 10.25 inch screen and a seven inch instrument panel screen. The range of that car came in almost at 200 miles at 199 miles of range. However, that's on the WLTP standard. So it's roughly about 177 miles of range on EPA. That's still far better than what the Mini Cooper is. That comes on a 42 kilowatt hour battery pack and Fiat said that it could charge up to 80% in 35 minutes using an 85 kilowatt charge. However, that car has now been discontinued for North America after the 2019 model year. Definitely disappointing, but used versions of these vehicles do exist. Another vehicle that I would have put on this list was a used Chevy Bolt. For a while, these cars were a great option and could dip into the $25,000 range and get around 200 miles of range on a charge. However, Chevy has been issuing all sorts of warnings, recalls, and holds on these cars that I cannot recommend anyone buy one until all of that is solved. In any case, next is an electric vehicle that comes as a big surprise to many because it's not something we would see in the US, the Honda E. The Honda E is another tiny hatchback with two doors, but the interior is possibly one of the coolest Honda interiors I've seen. It has a bunch of screens and features side cameras with screens instead of side mirrors. Quote, Honda brings its expertise in expressing the joy of driving an emotional attachment to the Honda E's simple and clean exterior design. New technologies such as pop-out door handles and camera mirror system that replaces door mirrors helps to accentuate the seamless, smooth appearance. Appearance. The Honda E features a very small battery pack at 35.5 kilowatt hours, but its stated range is 135 miles, realistically closer to 100 miles on the EPA standard. So again, it's one of those tiny city drivers that will work perfectly for many uses, but not be a popular single vehicle option in the US. That could be a large contributor to why Honda has zero plans to bring that car to the United States, even though it has great reviews almost across the board. Its price is actually fairly high and even with incentives wouldn't dip down below $25,000 if it were available in the US, but it does show that Honda can make a functional electric vehicle that people like. And this is definitely something we might see in the future in that price range. In a similar vein, but more functional comes the VW ID Life. VW has been pushing out a number of electric vehicles, particularly the ID4 in the United States, which has overall been doing well. It's showing that car companies can make decent electric vehicles if they want to. For now, their ranges don't top that of Tesla, but eventually they may be able to catch up to a certain 
some degree. The ID life is a concept that is expected to evolve into the ID2, which would be Volkswagen's entry into the $25,000 market, actually expected around $24,000. There are many concept photos of this car, which will feature four doors and even possibly a steering yoke, just like the new Tesla Model S, but it features a number of things like much of the car being made of recyclable materials. It looks a lot like the Mini Cooper SE we talked about earlier, and VW said, quote, the ID life is our vision of next generation fully electric urban mobility. The concept car provides a preview of an ID model in the small car segment that we will be launching in 2025, priced at around 20,000 euros. This means we are making electric mobility accessible to even more people. In creating the ID life, we have consistently focused on the needs of younger customers. We believe that even more so than today, the car of the future will be about lifestyle and personal expression. The customer of tomorrow won't simply want to get from A to B. They will be much more interested in the experiences that a car can offer. The ID Life is our answer to this. VW is developing a smaller version of their electric platform specifically for the small car segment, and this one will include a quote, 172 kilowatt electric motor. The ID Life accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.9 seconds, while its 57 kilowatt hour high voltage battery enables a range of some 400 kilometers WLTP. That 400 kilometers would convert to about 220 miles of range on the EPA standard, which is a solid range for an electric vehicle. Taking a little bit of influence from Tesla in this space, quote, the vehicle comes with a video game console and projector, as well as a projection screen that extends from the dash panel when required. That projector is also similar to the P5 projector feature we talked about earlier, and it really seems that all automakers are seeing consumer interest in being able to truly watch something or play serious games inside their vehicles. Unfortunately for anyone looking for an EV, VW plans for this car to come out about four years from now in 2025. By then, Tesla should have their $25,000 EV out, and overall EV ranges should be quite a bit higher than this, so I hope that VW can top their 220 mile estimated range, converted to EPA, when this car finally releases. Overall, I'm a fan of its simplistic design, and it's exciting to see a serious automaker like VW not only making EVs right now, but planning for the future of cheaper and cheaper EVs. Next up is a vehicle that hopefully will release by the time Tesla brings out their $25,000 EV, and it's the craziest vehicle we're talking about today from Aptura. Aptura Motors is focused on getting the best possible range in an EV, no matter the shape, and here is their vehicle. It's a small two-seater, three-wheel car, heavily inspired by Tesla with an interior that looks almost exactly like a Model 3. They even plan to use Tesla's power connector for their vehicles. The cheapest option for this Aptura comes in at $25,900, promises a range of 250 miles, a 0 to 60 in 5.5 seconds, and more. Included standard is a solar roof and dash that will add charge to your vehicle anytime it is in the sun. They say that it will get up to 16 miles of daily solar charge. That cheap model includes front wheel drive, and you can actually order this today for a $100 reservation fee, similar to what Tesla does for something like the Cybertruck. A number of features are offered on top of that $25,900 price tag, including safety pilot for $1,300, their level 2 autonomy system, enhanced audio, camp camping kit, pet kit, and off-road kit. Now while we're at it, you can actually upgrade this car to some absolutely insane specs better than any EV available. For $44,900, you can upgrade to a 1,000 mile battery pack. For $900, you can cover the whole car with solar panels to charge up to 40 miles per day from the sun. Then with their all-wheel drive system, you can get a 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds for $2,500. Even with this car fully specced out, including all of the bonus upgrades, you're looking at $52,100, which is insanely cheap for what it delivers, even as a weird looking three wheel two seater. The latest timeline from Aptura is a release by the end of 2021, which is getting very close, so I'm doubtful, but something about them seems to interest people more than the typical EV concept that seems years away. We'll have to see what comes from them, but as crazy and weird as this car looks, it may prove a good option in the $25,000 range if it comes out, delivering 250 miles of range to start. Next up is a car that has been around for a while, but many forget about the Nissan Leaf. The Nissan Leaf was one of the first more affordable EVs, and it has stuck around even though it originally offered very low ranges for its price. That's the pattern with all EVs getting up and running, and the Nissan Leaf now starts at just $27,400 MSRP. With tax incentives, you can get that car to cost as low as $19,900. That base model comes with a 40 kilowatt hour battery and 147 horsepower, offering you up to 149 miles of a 
an EPA range, definitely impressive for the low price it can get down to. Then Nissan offers up to a 62 kilowatt hour battery, which will get 226 miles of range, making it more suitable for average US drivers, but still lower than the 250 mark many aim for. It takes about 40 minutes for the 40 kilowatt hour battery to charge up to 80% on a 50 kilowatt quick charger and 60 minutes for the 62 kilowatt hour battery on a 50 kilowatt quick charger. The great thing about this car is that it has been around for a long time. Nissan has experience with making this car and it still holds up in reviews, especially for its price. There are a few other compelling electric cars with decent ranges like the Renault Zoe, Peugeot E208 and others, but as we can see, anything coming into the $25,000 price tag is small and low range. It's the only way to get it done with current battery technology, so the P5 really appears to be the best EV yet in that price range. It'll be interesting to see how well it sells and if Xpeng can keep up with the demand for that price, since it seems to offer more than anyone can offer at that price due to battery cost. Tesla's goal is not at all to create another one of these tiny cars. While they're expected to make an affordable small hatchback, they specifically want it to be compelling and truly offer features that make it make more sense than any other car in its price range. Even if you're shopping for a car around $18,000 or so, Tesla wants to make their $25,000 car make more sense since you'll save so much on gas, maintenance, and general cost of ownership compared with a gas option. The future of electric vehicles is getting very interesting, and for right now, competition is heating up in the $50,000 plus dollar zone. Soon, we should see that price cut in half, and I'm most excited to see what happens with Tesla's offering, the P5, the VW ID Life, and whatever kind of car you call the Aptura three-wheeler. If you could choose one of these cars today, Tesla excluded, what would you get? For me, it might actually be the Honda E because even though it's pricier, I just like how it looks with this tiny vehicle having such a crazy interior. Leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. In the meantime, if you wanna see the latest Tesla news, including new features in the Model S, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.